welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hurt, and today we're gonna to be talking about creative tactile cueing. So I wanna talk a little bit about what's happening uh, above the shoulders in our body, hopefully during Pilates. Um, I like to think of this, this terminology as above, so below. So the pelvis and the skull are actually partners in your body. They're, they are set to balance one another, offset each other, counterbalance for lots and lots of mobility. And in the Pilates repertoire, in the way that we cue, people talk about lumbo-pelvic stability and getting evenness of the legs into the pelvis, say in footwork. So there's lots of feedback uh, uh, sensory organization that the pelvis can do, right? From the legs, the feet, all of that good stuff. But the head is kind of just like left there to drift out into the nothing. And I want to show you some really simple ways that you can start to actually cue the skull that really helps your clients to align their spine and get this very visceral feeling of axial elongation. So the elongation up and down in the spine. So I've been doing lots of uh, fun, just research on um, native indigenous people that do lots of different positions that, you know, before we had chairs and beds, uh, that was the natural human movement. And one of them is actually carrying baskets on the head. So you can, you know, jump on the computer and see lots and lots of different pictures and videos of people carrying really heavy baskets on their heads with little to no effort and complete balance in their body. And most people would say, oh gosh, that must be so terrible on the shoulders. But actually, again, if the spine is aligned, that weight on on the head signals, just like the bottom of the feet signal the pelvis, the top of the head signals the spine to find that counter pressure up to actually find more and more space in the disc space. It's truly fascinating. So we can use this information in the Pilates studio. So whether you are standing uh, doing some standing Pilates work on the chair or anywhere seated, you can always interlace your fingers, place your hands on top of the head, make sure that the elbows aren't too wide, they're just gently in front and the shoulder blades are reaching long, and you can play with this idea of the hands reaching into the skull and the skull reaching up and into the hands. We also have a lot of fun taking maybe smart spine globes or any bean bags and placing it on the head to have our clients reach up and into. But a place that it's phenomenally useful is actually the ab curl. So I'm gonna lay down here and I'm gonna show you how to cue the skull. So your skull has rich nerve receptors, just like the bottoms of your feet and palms of your hands. It is just a map of our whole body. And this actually, getting this skull to move and sense and palpating it, helps to actually turn on the deep transverse abdominals, right? Exactly the abdominals we wanna access. So instead of placing the hands behind the head in ab curl, I want you to interlace the fingers again. The head is reaching into the hands, the shoulder blades are reaching into the elbows. I'm pressing down with my hands into the skull and now I'm countering my skull reaching into my hands. Now keeping that neutral spine and pelvis, I'm wheeling myself into my upper ab curl from this reaching into the skull. A lot of people go into their ab curl and they lose it. They lose their lengthening of their spine, but the minute they have their hands on their skull, they can really find more and more length into that nice ab curl. Notice I'm having my little shake of truth. We always wanna look for that. And then as they set themselves back down, they're still lengthening their spine and the crown of the head into the hands. So again, if I just curl up and I don't have the length of my spine, that's where I'm at. But when I start to reach my skull into my hands, you can see that the quality of my abdominal contraction changes 
and that I can keep really trying to pull my head up and up and up. And it starts to get into that long tissue of the connective tissue of the back line of the body that we're tractioning to go up into a nice solid ab curl. That's all for today. If you have any questions or observations you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or a forum. See you next time and never stop learning. Oh,